Well, we've been singing about the birth of Christ, and this is the time in our service where we direct our attention to his death and the time of communion. So there can be some men that are coming forward. If you do not have a Bible, if you would place your hand in the air, and they'll make sure you get one. That would be yours to be able to follow along in the service this morning. And we'll be preparing for communion this morning by looking at the book of 1 Peter, so you can begin to turn there. And we'll, we'll look at two passages this morning, um, and you can first make your way to 1 Peter chapter 2, beginning in verse 21. In 1 Peter 2 and 3, Peter directs Christians to conduct themselves in humility and in gentleness um, before others when enduring hostility, mistreatment, reviling, slander, and even outright suffering and persecution. But Peter encourages the believer by looking at Jesus' example in suffering. No matter the difficulty of your circumstance, the seeming injustice of what you are enduring, the cruelty of what you are facing, Jesus was the ultimate example of unjust suffering, humility, and patient forbearance. So let's look at our first passage this morning in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21. For to this you have been called, since Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps, who did no sin. Nor was any deceit found in his mouth, who being reviled was not reviling in return. While suffering, he was uttering no threats, but kept entrusting himself to him who judges righteously, who himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, so that having died to sin, we might live to righteousness. By his wounds you were healed, for you were continually straying like sheep, but now have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. So what do we see about what Jesus endured? Verse 23, he was reviled, he was made to suffer. Reviling is best understood as harsh criticism and insults. In verse 24, he was wounded, he was put to death. And how did he endure? Verse 23, not reviling in return, not insulting those who insulted him, not treating his enemies as they deserved, not threatening, not taking judgment into his own hands, but entrusting that to his father and his timing. Why did Jesus suffer? Did he himself sin? No. Verse 22, who did no sin. He also spoke no lies and slander about those putting him to death. He trusted his father. Jesus was sinless. And since he didn't suffer for his own sin, why did he willingly suffer? Verse 24, who himself bore our sins on his body, on the tree. Jesus died on the cross to bear our sins. And we were all born in sin, enslaved to it, doing what we desired, and our sins were rebellion against God. And if a man commits a crime on earth, we instinctively know that a good judge must uphold justice and punish sin. It's good for a judge not to let a murderer go. It's right for a judge to punish evil. But our crimes were against an infinite and holy and good God. We could never pay the price of our sin, and God, being a good judge, must uphold justice and punish sin. And that is why, as we read in verse 24, it was necessary for Jesus, who had no sin of his own, to pay the penalty and punishment of our sin, a price we could never pay, and punish sin by punishing his son. And what was the aim of Christ's death for our sin? Verse 24, Peter said that it was so that we, having died to sin, might live to righteousness. 
By his wounds, we would be healed. And those who put their faith in Christ alone through his death are actually said to die to sin and, and to live to righteousness. It completely changes our relationship to sin. Peter says, by his wounds, we are healed. And we know Peter isn't talking about physical healing in this life because he's writing to people who are very clearly suffering in this life and will continue to suffer. And just as the believer's death spoken about in this passage is not physical death, so too is the believer's new life and healing, not just physical healing. Rather, this passage speaks to an eternal cure for our sin new and eternal life in Christ Jesus. Let's just look briefly at the second portrait of Christ's suffering. Skip down to chapter 3, verse 18. 1 Peter 3, 18. Peter articulates the same truths from a slightly different angle. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all. The righteous for the unrighteous, so that he might bring you to God, having put to, been put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. Peter reiterates the sinlessness of Christ. We were unrighteous, and he suffered once and for all. That is, he doesn't need to keep paying the price over and over again. He died once, he was put to death for sin, but didn't remain dead. He was raised from the dead by the Holy Spirit, evidencing the acceptance of his payment for our sin. Here, Peter looks at a different angle of the same aim of this death. In verse 18, he says, he died so that he might bring you to God. Believer, Christ died to bring us to God. The good news of Christ's death and payment for sin unifying us to his death and unifying us to his resurrection is so that we might be brought to God. God is the good news of the gospel. In Christ, we have fellowship and union with God himself. If you are in Christ, you have a new relationship with sin because of his death. And you have been equipped to follow him in newness of life because of his resurrection. No matter the difficulty of your circumstances, and trust yourself to him who judges righteously. Thanking him that your sin was paid for on the cross. Confess to him any sin this morning that you've been entangled by. And entrust yourself to his promise to help you walk and live to righteousness. We're going to be passing some plates around in a minute with a cup and a piece of bread and if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, having trusted in him alone for salvation, please join us this morning. And even if you don't go to this church and, and take one when it's passed so that you can remember Christ's death paid for you. Man, you can go ahead and come forward and begin passing the plates. If you are not a follower of Jesus Christ, when the plates come to you, we ask that you would just let them pass by without taking from them as this is a remembrance for those who have placed their trust in Christ alone for salvation. But please consider what has been shared this morning from God's word. Heed God's word and place your faith in Christ today. Don't leave here today without talking to someone about what it means to be forgiven of your sin so you might know what it means to actually be able to come to God. As the men pass the, begin passing the elements out, uh, when you are received it, prepared your heart, believe it, you can go ahead and take communion on your own. And then I will be back up here in a few minutes to close this in prayer.